This is an experiment to investigate the relationship between gas pressure and temperature. The gas that I'll be investigating is some air inside this flask here, which is a sealed unit. So this, this glass flask is sealed to this tube, which is connected to this pressure gauge here. So that's the gas that I'll actually be investigating there. The pressure gauge is obviously going to tell me the pressure of the gas and I, in order to record the temperature I have a thermocouple here which is connected to this data logger. I'm just using the data logger to give me a straightforward readout here. So when I'm at the desired pressure I'll record the temperature and put those into my table. I've got some ice here so I'll put the ice into this beaker in which the flask will be then submerged with ice and water and I'll bring down the temperature as cold as I can get to and note the pressure and the temperature that I'm at then and then I'll use this Bunsen burner to heat the water up that will be inside the beaker and slowly raise the temperature and pressure for the air well, for the beaker, which will then transmit the temperature to the flask. And as I, when I have enough readings, I'll then have a look at the investigation. So I'll be looking to see whether pressure and temperature are directly proportional or whether they are inversely proportional. And we'll see what type of graph that gives us as well. So the first thing to do is to put this ice into the beaker with some water and we will then notice the temperature from the thermocouple will start to drop and we'll then start taking some readings. The other thing that I'll be doing, which is a little bit unusual perhaps, is you'll see the pressure gauge on the outside here. These are 10 to the five newtons per square meter or 10 to the five pascals. So currently it's sitting just over 100,000 pascals, which is atmospheric pressure. And on the inside, we have pounds per square inch. Now, if you look at the increments for the, the pascals range and the pounds per square inch, you notice that the pounds per square inch increments are smaller, so they're closer together than the pascals. So what that means is that with, if I use this inner scale, the pounds per square inch, I'll actually get a higher resolution to my readings. And therefore, from an, a point of view of minimizing uncertainties, that would actually be preferable. I'm gonna get better readings from that pounds per square inch. So what I'll be doing is I'll be recording the pressure in pounds per square inch, and I'll then be converting those values into kilopascals once they're in my spreadsheet. I'll also be converting the temperature into kelvins in order that both are in the SR unit system. So let's get this ice in and get the water in. And we'll see what temperature we can get this down to. Right, the flask in the beaker is now fully submerged in that ice water mixture. And the, the ice is nicely surrounding that. The thermocouple is now reading the temperature at 10 degrees C, so you can see it's, it's dropped quite a lot from, that was from the ambient air temperature. It's continuing to go down, so I'll let that continue to cool down. And we should see the, the pressure gauge dropping slightly. It has dropped slightly there. Hopefully we'll get down to 14 PSI. Okay, this is now at 14 PSI. And the temperature, it's just around, it's around the five degree C mark. It's, as you can see, it's fluctuating. It's about to go up to six. So it was down at the lower end of the five because it was crossing over to the four. Well, you can see there as well, it's around the four, five, six mark. So I, I think we can say that that's five degree C. So I'm gonna take that as my first reading, 14 PSI at five degree C. And now, I'll start raising the temperature of the water by using the Bunsen burner and I'll be taking readings at 15, 16, 17 psi. Okay, 
Okay, as you can see, the temperature is starting to rise, and that pressure gauge is now starting to go above the 14 psi mark. So you can see well, where we're at. I'll need to be careful here to make sure I'm not heating the water too fast because there will be a lag between the temperature reading that I take here and allowing that temperature to truly permeate to the gas inside the flask and therefore be reading the pressure here because the, the thermocouple is in the water, it's not in the gas. So in order to get the most accurate reading possible, I'll need to slow down the rate at which I'm heating the water as I'm approaching the pressure at which I want to take the reading. We're just shy of the boiling point here, so we're not going to make it to 18 psi around here. But you can see the needle is right on there at 1.2 times 10 to the 5 pascals, it's 120 kilopascals. So we could use that measurement there. Okay, now I can turn this off. For this experiment, I'm not going to repeat an average, but a good way to do that with this experiment would be to allow everything to cool back down, and as the temperature drops, and you, the pressure drops when you're at your pressures that you want to take readings at, you take a second set of readings for the temperature, and that would, though for me that would require putting some more ice in to drop the temperature, down so that we could get back down to 14 psi. Right, so I've collected my results. I'm going to put those into my table and I'm going to see what the relationship is between pressure and temperature. <laughs> 